So my first go with these pigment markers was not a very big success and I kind of traced it to the paper I was using. I tried a bunch of different papers, couldn't get any of them to work for me, so I thought I was going to have to use pigment marker paper. But then after chatting to somebody on Twitter, they suggested using the back of regular marker paper. So it sounds simple and perhaps too good to be true, but here I'm using the front of a sheet of bleedproof marker paper, and as you can see, red and yellow, not too much blending going on at all. But then when I flip it over, and you can see by the stain on the right hand side, this is the same sheet of bleedproof marker paper, it's a totally different story. So working on the back, I noticed straight away that there was a big difference here, uh, and the ink seemed to stay wet uh, much longer, whereas on the front, it would get soaked into the paper straight away, and you virtually couldn't mess with it. Look how easy it is now. I've got the yellow on top of the red there, sorry, magenta, uh, and I'm able to blend the two together to get a really nice orange absolutely straight away. This was a bit of a breakthrough for a couple of reasons. The number one one was that I'd seen all of this stuff demonstrated on other YouTube videos with people getting much better results than what I had been able to get with the other papers. So this looked more like how it was supposed to be. Uh, and the second reason was that I've got quite a bit of bleedproof marker paper lying around. And if I can use that up with these, instead of going out and buying a, you know, a completely new sketch pad, which I, I think were about 15 pounds um, sort of sterling, to try and get 50 sheets of pigment marker paper, if I can use up stuff I've already got lying around, then that makes way more sense to do that if it's going to work. So this is a close-up of one of my own reference pictures, Yellow Rose, and I thought this would be great because I've only got six colours. Uh, and yellow red were two of them and I thought well may as well do a yellow rose and for all the shadows the orangey bits I've got the red to help me out and if I can also use the um, the white blender pen and see how that works because there's been a lot of fuss and people talking about that so one of the first things you should notice is is they're quite streaky or at least at the moment the way I'm using them on but just my second go um, there's quite a streaky effect to them and they certainly you know I learned straight away that if you could do bigger bolder strokes perhaps you know, continuous strokes and continuous lines with these uh, markers, it would probably look a lot better than doing lots of small little back and forth, uh, you know, just shorter strokes, uh, unless of course that was the kind of effect that you were, you know, hoping to achieve. With the petal that I'm working on right now, you can see that I'm doing lots of little short strokes. It's a slightly different shape petal to the one that I was just doing where I could just do those big fat sweepy upwards uh, from the bottom upwards to the right type of strokes. This is a bit more complicated and, and using a bit more blending. Uh, and as you can see, as I put the yellow straight on there, it was already a bit orange because it's got a bit of magenta from the previous petal on the tip. Uh, and as you sort of work it around on the paper, it would eventually leave that on the paper and go back to being yellow. Uh, but at the moment it's got that sort of you know, ready orange effect and you can see I'm struggling to, to do the strokes the way I would like to at the moment, perhaps because I'm using the chisel nib but also because I'm just getting used to the pen uh, and I would perhaps like them to be, like I said, more flowing. Oh, cleaning the nib there as well on a spare scrap of paper as you can see, it's much brighter yellow when I come back with it but it gets contaminated with the other colours quite quickly. So at this point I start having to go with the white blender and see if I can put a highlight on this petal using the white blender. And I wasn't quite sure if it was blending with the colour so much as sort of smearing it and pushing it out of the way to replace it with the, the white blender kind of effect. Uh, it does seem to work, but I wasn't entirely convinced with it. I was kind of liking the idea of just doing highlights in the regular colour, um, like yellow, um, rather than using the white blender pen. So as I go into a bit of a close-up here, you can see the paper is still quite wet, allowing you quite a bit of time to, to work it and rework it if you want to. But I did find that the more colour that I was putting on, the kind of more muddy everything was beginning to get in terms of like the blending of the colours and the sort of purity of the colours. Um, so in a way that was kind of good and, and the way that you can see the strokes almost like painting. I felt it was a very, very painterly effect that they've tried to go for with these markers. Completely different to say, you know, blending with an alcohol marker like a, a pro marker. And, you know, I'd done quite a bit of painting in my youth. And so I was I was OK with the idea that the strokes of, of your, uh, your pen or, you know, when you're painting your brush would show up and you didn't have to blend everything smoothly. I was I'm OK with that but it does become a little bit tricky to work with once you've added a lot of color and you're trying to move it around, 
it's quite difficult to get rid of the strokes if you wanted to. So you've almost, I was finding I had to make them a part of um, the overall picture and the overall effect uh, that I was trying to achieve. But also this is early doors. This is only my second go with these markers. So I'm pretty much sure that on a second or a third go, I'd be trying to uh, get a slightly more even blend or tr try and hide the strokes that I'm, I'm showing right now. Try and hide those a little bit more and disguise them into the picture um, if I was to you know, use these a lot more and really get into using them and the sort of nuances of, of how they worked. But definitely using them on the right kind of paper which allowed these markers to shine gave me a completely different, a far more positive view of them. Now the other thing that I'd heard about proper pigment marker paper is that you can rework it hours after you've done the original drawing. And as you can see here, I wasn't totally happy with some of the highlights that I put on. I thought they were a bit too white and not as clear as I'd like them to be. So this is 24 hours later, I go back in, mostly using the yellow and the white uh, blender pen, and I see if I can rework it and change what I've done or alter what I've done in some way. And it actually did work, even on paper that was as thin as this, which it must be about 70 or 80 GSM. Um, it was workable. You know, as soon as I put that mark on and rubbed it around a little bit, I was able to work with, you can see me wiping off some of, some of the sort of pigment that's come off on it. I was able to, you know, move around some of the color and blend it again a little bit more successfully. Um, so that made me look at it almost like you would, you know, oil paints. Uh, the idea that you can slap them on and then weeks later come back, wipe them off, rework an entire uh, section. I felt that if you were careful enough, and I'm, I'm working quite gently here to kind of rework uh, the pigment, you know, one day later, I'm working pretty gently to do that so that I wouldn't um, risk ripping or tearing the paper like I had on my very first try with these. Um, but you could alter it. In terms of the way it feels when you're actually drawing on the paper and using the markers, I'd say that it, it reminded me of trying to paint or use marker pens or felt tip pens on glass. If you've ever painted onto glass with just regular paints or tried to use marker felt pens on glass, it had that kind of feel to it, that kind of, and you can see by the streaks with, within the colors that I've got here, it's got that one color slightly mixes with the other but almost replaces it as well and leaves a bit of an edge. Uh, again, not necessarily a bad thing. It can, you know, give your work a completely different look. And the way that this looks, considering it's been done with markers, is totally different to the other work that I do with markers, which is much more smooth, classic, blended, you know, alcohol marker technique. So I've got to say this second go went far more successfully than my first go with these pigment markers. And I could see myself getting maybe a couple more of these. Um, in order to try and do uh, a sort of richer variety of work. I mean, these I could see these being terrific for doing on-the-spot portraits or on-the-spot landscapes uh, that you can then take away and rework and tweak a little bit once you got back to your studio or your house or whatever. Um, so I'm definitely going to have a bit more of a go with these. So here's the finished piece. Uh, I'm quite pleased with it, but I want to know what you guys think. So please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, and perhaps check out some of the other links that I've put below to other videos.